from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Line. Well, happy Thursday evening, everybody. Rory Johnston in the Open Line chair tonight. We are glad you're with us. Can you believe it's the last day of March? Now, of course, Open Line, we're going to run encore presentations of this, so it might be a few days from now. But as of right now, we are wrapping up March, and that means the Tennessee General Assembly is beginning to wrap up their work. So tonight we are going to focus on Tennessee gun legislation this year in 2022 and I know it's a, it can be a hot button topic but that's great we want to put it out there and we open our phone line 737 plus is the number if you would like to call in and ask a question or or a comment and we're pleased to welcome our guest tonight Jesse McKinney via zoom hi Jesse thanks for being with us Hi, thanks for having me. Sure. Jessie is a volunteer. She is with a group called Moms Demand Action, the Tennessee chapter, because we know that this is throughout the country. So we'll start with, tell us a little bit about Moms Demand Action and then how you got involved. Yeah, sure. Well, Moms Demand Action is a grassroots organization that is working to promote gun safety and the passage of common sense gun laws to help protect our families and communities. We had 8 million supporters all across the country. We're in every state and the District of Columbia. Uh, here in Tennessee, we have a Tennessee chapter with volunteers that range all the way from Memphis to the Tri-Cities area. And what's really interesting about our group here in Tennessee is that we're composed of all kinds of people. We have teachers and moms and grandparents and veterans and gun owners and rural communities and suburban communities and urban communities. And we're all working together to promote the common goal of creating a safer Tennessee. All right. And uh, again, how did how did you first get involved? What was your impetus? You know, a lot of people that are involved in Moms to Men Action have a personal connection to having their lives touched tragically by gun violence. And that is not the case with me. Um, I'm a mom and like so many other moms, I think in Tennessee, I just got tired of seeing the news stories every day of another shooting, um, another mass shooting in the news, another gun found on a school campus, or I think what is most tragic for me as a mom is another child who unintentionally gains access to a weapon and shoots themselves or somebody else. And I just saw that the tragedy of gun violence is all around us. And I knew that I didn't have the answer to fix all the problems, but I knew I couldn't stay on the sidelines and just sit and wait for more bad things to happen. So I had to get in the game and, okay. and work to make my community safer. Sure, so as a volunteer, what, what kind of work do you do? Yeah, you know, I'm a volunteer and um, we do different things. So right now it is legislative session in Nashville. So one of the things that we do is work with our lawmakers to uh, pass common sense gun laws that are gonna help keep us safer. Another aspect of our work is that we work to promote education on safe gun storage. Mm -hmm. um, right now, there's an estimated 4.6 million children in the United States who live in a home with a gun that is loaded and unlocked. Um, and we can save lives without having to pass a single law if we communicate to family members and to gun owners the importance of making sure that their weapons are secured, mm -hmm. locked, and out of the hands of children. So that's another big part of what we do. Sure. And we know in Tennessee with a, pred a predominantly Republican legislature um, and, and lots of hunters, fishermen, lots of gun owners in, in Tennessee, how do you tell uh, someone maybe on the other side of an argument uh, assure them hey we're not trying to take your guns um, this is what we're, we're trying to do um, because there's a lot of money on both sides uh, put, with lobbying and whatnot how do you kind of approach the debate or approach lawmakers who you know you you know might support something that you are not you don't want passed yeah, you know, it's a difficult conversation to have. And I think um, what has happened is that so many times we don't listen to each other anymore. Right. And when someone meets me and they understand that I'm from Moms Demand Action, 
they have an idea of what they think I want to happen. And I am not in the business of taking anyone's guns right. away. I don't want to repeal the Second Amendment. That is not what Moms Demand Action is about. Um, and so I really try to steer the conversation to remind people that we want the same things. We want safe communities. We want our children to grow up. We don't want to be touched by the violence and the tragedy that is gun violence. And so we want the same things. Sometimes we don't always agree on this, how to get there right, in the same right. way. But I think if we keep in mind that we are working towards the same goal, we just have different approaches. And when we, we can listen and understand where each person is coming from, that's ultimately how we can make a difference. And, you know, a big part of Moms to Ban Action is working to create a culture of gun safety, of responsible gun right. ownership. And I've had so many conversations with hunters and with people who have grown up with firearms as part of their family heritage and part of their culture. But they also understand that a gun is a deadly weapon. Yeah. It's not a toy. And, you know, that secure storage is so important. And I find that that is something that oftentimes we all can agree on. Yeah, I agree, too. I think you can connect there. And I, I've had the same conversations with uh, many friends and families who, uh, like you said, are gun owners. And right away, when you, you talk about common sense, most of the, the people I've talked to or, or friends or family members uh, of mine who are gun owners, they're very responsible very cognizant um, you know they have gun safes they have lock boxes they're, they're very very careful and and most people agree that's a responsibility if you're a gun owner that you need to be uh, trained you need to make sure your that kids is. know you know no one wants that kind of, of thing to happen and yet like you mentioned the statistics we hear about these things all the day all, all the time. I was going to bring up too, here locally in our newsroom, we get uh, emails and news releases from the Metro Police Department a couple times a month uh, about guns stolen from cars. And we we did a whole uh, series of broken the juvenile justice system. You know, so many kids, uh, juveniles, who have strayed uh, are just easily opening car doors and finding loose guns in cars and then those guns can be traced to violent crimes or robberies, et cetera, you know, months, weeks or months later. Um, how do we, how, and most responsible gun owners would say, that's ridiculous, you, sh, you know, it, where do we hold people accountable? How do we get the word out about not just leaving your gun irresponsibly in an unlocked car overnight, but same thing in the house? Yes, and this is a real problem in the state yeah. of Tennessee. I know that the news media has actually done a great job communicating just how big of a problem guns being stolen from cars is. And, um, you know, I think it starts with, again, creating that culture of responsible gun ownership um, and sharing the information. I think like you mentioned, the stories that you've done puts the information out there. And I do think there's a role for legislation to, in, to, to play in this. Right. I do think there's a place where we can have secure storage um, be part of our law, where if you have a gun and it is in your car, it needs to be locked. Um, you know, you need to be responsible that your weapon does not fall into the hands of someone who is legally prohibited from having it. And so you should take that responsibility to lock it up. And right now, I do think legislation might be something that needs to happen for that to come into play. Right. So speaking of legislation, uh, we're coming up on our first break here in a second, and we're going to dive into what's happening here in the Tennessee legislature. And like I said to you before uh, this program began, I hope you can kind of update me. Things move quickly. Uh, so we can get kind of an update on where we are and usually uh, gun safety advocates um, are fighting proposals that are that are there but this year also there are some actual um, proposals that are being supported one of them is a bill that would allow a family member or law enforcement to petition the court to get a gun away from someone who might be at risk of harming themselves mm -hmm. or others. We're going to dive into that as well because that's a case where you say, well, how do you know, who can determine if this person's at risk or whatnot? So we're going to, we're going to dive into that uh, a little bit after this uh, break. So 
stay with us, everybody. Our guest is Jesse McKinney. The topic is Tennessee gun legislation, important for everybody. We'll be right back.